A long time ago, in a lively city called Carthage, there was a person named Hannibal who walked back and forth while thinking. He really wanted to get back at the Romans who had been bothering him. He made a plan that was so surprising and daring that even the bravest fighters would be surprised. On the other side of the battlefield, in the mighty city of Rome stood Fabius Maximus, the stoic general with a knack for strategy. Addressing his troops with a twinkle in his eye, he unveiled a plan so cunning it could earn a standing ovation from the gods themselves. Fabius Maximus cleared his throat, adjusting his stance, and began his rousing speech. My fellow comrades, let us not be fooled by the audacity of our enemies. Yes, the Carthaginian general, Hannibal, is a formidable foe, to say the least. But we Romans are not ones to shy away from a challenge, are we? The troops, sensing the thrill of adventure, roared in agreement. Fabius Maximus continued, Now I know you're all thinking, leave it to Fabius to come up with an elaborate plan. But hear me out. The key to defeating Hannibal is to not engage him directly. We shall bide our time, keeping his forces at bay like a kid with an overprotective mother. And when the opportune moment arrives, we strike with full force, catching him off guard and securing our victory. The soldiers were electrified, clapping and chanting Fabius Maximus's name with fervor. The general, basking in the glory of the moment, bellowed, my comrades, let us show those Carthaginians that when it comes to strategy, we Romans play chess while they play checkers. And let us not forget the most important ingredient to victory, a hearty feast of Roman spaghetti. The soldiers laughed and cheered, feeling like they couldn't be defeated with Fabius Maximus leading them. But they didn't realize that it was the general's funny and perfectly timed tricks that would end up helping them the most. Hannibal and his army began their journey through the dangerous Alps, hoping to surprise their enemies with a clever attack. As they walked through the snow-covered mountains, the soldiers complained and felt cold, questioning the sanity of their brave leader. However, Hannibal continued without hesitation, not letting the cold winds discourage him. The Carthaginian soldiers, bundled up tightly like mummies, trudged through the snow. They were amazed by Hannibal's bold plan, but also wondered if their seemingly fearless leader had lost his sanity. In the midst of their frosty march, Hannibal turned to his weary soldiers and exclaimed, Feet, my friends, it's time to man up. Winter is but a chilly challenge in the grand tale that we'll weave. With a twinkle in his eye and a mischievous grin, he continued, Besides, think of it as an opportunity to discover just how many layers of clothing we can put on before we resemble puffed up penguins. <laughs> The soldiers were pleasantly surprised and started laughing in the cold air. It warmed their spirits for a moment. They admired how their leader could bring some humor and togetherness, even in tough times. With more determination and extra clothes, they continued walking. They firmly believed in Hannibal's bold plan. Meanwhile, back in Rome, Fabius Maximus meticulously executed his cunning strategy, earning himself the nickname The Ghost among his troops. He knew that patience was the key to their victory, and with each passing day, he played a daring game of hide and seek with the Carthaginian forces. Hannibal, growing increasingly frustrated, searched for his elusive Roman foe in vain. He scratched his head, wondering if he was facing a phantom army that had mastered the art of disappearing like Houdini. Where are these Romans hiding? He muttered to himself, his brow furrowing. Little did Hannibal know, Fabius Maximus was orchestrating a theatrical masterpiece of deception. Under the cover of night, the Romans would leave behind campfires, tents, and even fake soldiers, fooling Hannibal into believing that their presence was larger than life. It was a specter of ingenuity, meant to haunt the Carthaginian general's dream. 
As Hannibal's frustration mounted, desperation began to cloud his mind. He knew that time was not on his side, and the pressure to deliver a decisive blow to the Roman forces weighed heavily upon him. Consulting his trusted advisors, he pondered over potential strategies that would force Fabius Maximus out of hiding. One particularly audacious idea emerged from the depths of Hannibal's restless imagination. To lure the Romans out using a diversionary tactic, he decided to unleash his cavalry in a calculated display of strength towards a seemingly vital Roman outpost, hoping to draw Fabius Maximus and his troops into a trap. With a fierce determination burning in his eyes, Hannibal addressed his soldiers, explaining his risky plan. He reminded them of their unwavering bravery and the countless victories they had achieved under his command. My warriors, he declared, we shall unleash a tempest of power and confusion upon the Romans. Let them believe they have the upper hand, for it is in their complacency that we shall find our triumph. The Carthaginian soldiers, their spirits rekindled by their general's fervent speech, exchanged excited glances and nodded in agreement. They trusted Hannibal's cunning brilliance, knowing that he was capable of turning even the bleakest situation to his advantage. Under the cover of darkness, Hannibal's cavalry set out on their mission, thundering towards the Roman outpost with an air of controlled chaos. Meanwhile, the rest of the Carthaginian army strategically positioned themselves to ambush the anticipated Roman response. As dawn broke, the Romans were startled awake by the deafening sound of hooves, their sleep-deprived minds struggling to comprehend the situation. Fabius Maximus swiftly understood the ruse and grudgingly admired Hannibal's audacity. He called upon his soldiers to remain calm and resolute, refusing to take the bait laid out before them. Back in Hannibal's camp, anticipation mixed with anxiety as the Carthaginian forces eagerly awaited the Romans' reaction. They knew that the outcome of this high-risk ploy would dictate the course of the war. In the midst of the tense silence, Hannibal urged his soldiers to remain steadfast. Patience, my brave warriors, he whispered. The greatest victories are born from calculated risks. The hours dragged on, each minute feeling like an eternity. Until finally, as the sun reached its zenith, Fabius Maximus emerged with his army, not falling for Hannibal's bait. The Carthaginians' hearts sank, realizing that their ploy had failed. Yet, true to their indomitable spirit, they quickly regrouped and readied themselves for the next unexpected twist in this relentless game of wits. Hannibal refused to let disappointment seep into his bones, determined to outmaneuver his foe through sheer brilliance. The war was far from over, and he knew that his remarkable mind held the key to unlocking victory. As the two generals once again engaged in their gripping duel, the world watched in awe, captivated by the unfolding drama of Hannibal versus Fabius Maximus a contest of strategic genius that would undoubtedly be etched into the annals of military history. The rivalry between Hannibal and Fabius Maximus escalated into a battle of unmatched brilliance, where each general sought to outwit the other on the grandest stage of warfare. As the war continued to unfold, the world held its breath, waiting to witness the next move in this mesmerizing chess game. Fabius Maximus, known for his cautious approach, studied every possible route of attack, meticulously analyzing the terrain and the strengths and weaknesses of his adversary. He recognized that Hannibal's Achilles' heel lay in his strained supply lines and the need to feed his vast army of warriors and elephants. With this knowledge in mind, Fabius devised a plan to stretch and exhaust Hannibal's resources. Under the cover of darkness, the Roman force Forces stealthily maneuvered across the countryside, sabotaging supply routes, poisoning wells, and raiding Carthaginian outposts. They left a trail of destruction in their wake, with the aim of weakening Hannibal's grip on his tenuous supply chain. Hannibal, no stranger to adversity, was quick to adapt. He responded with strategic 
strategic brilliance, cleverly employing local tribesmen and sympathizers to gather intelligence on the elusive Romans. He set up ambushes and created diversions, aiming to lure Fabius Maximus into a false sense of security. The war raged on, with each general consistently foiling the other's attempts to gain the upper hand. It was a battle of attrition, where patience and endurance were paramount. The world watched in awe as these two master tacticians danced to a tune only they could hear. As the conflict intensified, the toll on both sides became evident. The Romans, despite their meticulous planning, struggled to contain Hannibal's formidable military prowess. The Carthaginians, in turn, grappled with the relentless pressure exerted by Fabius Maximus and his resource-draining tactics. Yet, despite the hardships faced, neither Hannibal nor Fabius Maximus faltered in their determination. They rallied their troops, rekindling the fires of hope and resilience. To the soldiers, their generals became living legends, embodying unwavering courage in the face of adversity. In the face of this relentless tug of war, the world marveled at the ingenuity displayed by both sides. The sheer brilliance with which each general executed their strategies, evading and countering each move, was a testament to their indomitable spirit and unwavering dedication. The rivalry between Hannibal and Fabius Maximus became more than a mere battle for supremacy. It evolved into a clash of ideologies and a test of military brilliance. Their names were spoken with reverence and admiration, becoming synonymous with strategic genius. The war would eventually come to an end, leaving behind stories of audacity, ingenuity, and relentless determination. The world would forever be captivated by the eternal enigma that was Hannibal versus Fabius Maximus, a rivalry that transcended time and left an indelible mark on the annals of military history. Scipio Africanus, a Roman general with the heart of a lion, plotted his move. With confidence in his stride, he rallied his troops and prepared for a showdown with Hannibal. Rumors spread among the soldiers that Scipio Africanus ate bowls of Roman spaghetti before every battle, a fact that made his opponents tremble with both fear and laughter. Warriors clashed on the battlefield of Zama, a grand finale of epic proportions. Hannibal, grinning like a mischievous imp, locked eyes with Scipio Africanus, their gaze electric with determination. The fate of empires hung in the balance as swords clashed, shields shattered, and the earth trembled beneath their feet. And in the end, it was Rome that emerged victorious, leaving Hannibal to reflect on the bittersweet taste of defeat. A.S. Carthage contemplated the future. Its war-worn citizens realized that perhaps the path of peace would have been wiser. They yearned for laughter and lightness instead of the darkness brought by the ravages of war. And so, the Second Punic War faded into memory, an epic tale of audacity and rivalry, forever etched in history's hallowed pages, a reminder to choose spaghetti over swords and comedy over chaos. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment below.